I'm Ronald Lee, and I am uh, recording this from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Unfortunately, I can't be there because of health reasons, but otherwise I would have been in New York at this time. I have prepared a short address uh, for this uh, presentation. Prior to the publication of The Gypsies by Jan Ewers in 1967, there was very little accurate material available for the reader who was interested in gypsies other than academic treatises like the Journal of the Gypsy Law Society and other scholarly publications of little interest to non-members of the society and lay people, plus the romantic fiction and travel logs written by a plethora of authors from George Borrow's Lavengro to Walter Starkey's In Sarah's Tents that were eagerly consumed by the average reader. The last previous really accurate portrayal of Roma was, in my opinion, Irving Brown's Gypsy Fires in America, first published in 1918 and pretty well dated by 1967, as by then Brown's American Roma had more or less abandoned a traveling lifestyle and moved into the urban jungles of North America, there to be rediscovered by Professor Rena C. Gropper in 1987 with the publication of Gypsies in the City, Cultural Patterns and Survival. This again had more appeal to academics and anthropology students than to the general public. The Gypsies by yours, however, had mass appeal to the average reader, and in my opinion, went a long way to demolish many of the long-held stereotypes about Roma that had inundated popular fiction, from The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo through Paprika by Eric von Strohan to The King of the Gypsies by Peter Maas and its film adaptations. Yours, on the other hand, fulfilled many a young person's dream. He actually ran away with a band of real gypsies. Not only did he run off with a nomadic group of Lovari Roma in his native Belgium as a teenager, but he returned, like Glanville's scholar gypsy in the poem by Matthew Arnold, to tell the world what he had learnt about his Roma friends. We are fortunate that his Bohemian parents allowed him to do this, otherwise the popular image of the Roma would be the lesser for it. But Ewers found his Lovara friends in the twilight of their culture and nomadic lifestyle. Soon the darkness of fascism would engulf them and the rest of occupied Europe as Hitler's hordes extinguished freedom and began the roundup of the Untermenschen that led to the gas chambers of the death factories for those considered unfit to live in the Aryan New Order. The Roma resistance is covered by yours in his second publication, Crossing, published post-war in 1987. Communism in Eastern Europe and mindless bureaucracy and right-wing demagogues in Western Europe would ensure that the former nomadic lifestyle of his Lovari friends would never be resumed in the way that it had existed before the war. The horses and caravans were gone or, or going fast as the Roma were forced into the urban ghettos and shanty towns like montreuil sur bois near Paris. Nevertheless, yours continued his association with his Lovari friends and other Roma who had survived the horror of the Roma genocide, and he continued to add to his collection of photographs of Roma for posterity. I never met Jan Ewers and was unfamiliar with his later life as a celebrity in New York until I read Hidden Tapestry by Deborah Dean. 
This has given me a much better insight into yours himself, separated in a way from his connection with Roma. He was indeed a man of many talents and a man who marched to his own drum, from teenage runaway with Roma to wartime resistance operative to author, tapestry designer, photographer, and New York celebrity. As Frank Sinatra would have said, he did it his way. In my opinion, his books have been a valuable contribution towards a more positive image of my people for the discerning reader. I have in the past heard many favorable comments from lay people and academics about his books, and I have recommended them to my students during my seminars on Roma studies at the University of Toronto. Let us hope this new book will refocus the attention of readers on his two, pre on his two books on Roma, which will help combat the negativity that all too often surrounds Roma in Europe and the Americas. Nice to menga Romali, te ashunen mangi.